from the back of pedicabs to an entire exhibit, Game of Thrones was everywhere this year at South by Southwest. Festival goers enjoyed a behind the scenes look at everything from costumes to dragons to swords. There was a place to mourn favorite characters, try the show's signature fire and blood red ale, or even get a picture taken on the Iron Throne. We caught up with Game of Thrones actor Harry Lloyd to talk about his role in the show and what it was like to play the infamous Targaryen prince. It's very fun to play someone who goes against everything around it. Because so you kind of have to rewrite the script and the book. In the book, he's only ever seen from his sister's point of view. He's this nasty brat. But when you play him, you just have to kind of rewrite the story where he's the main part and he's the hero and he's absolutely right. And so every scene where people disagree with you, it's just very frustrating. And so you're not playing the baddie, you're just playing that everyone else is stupid. And so that gives you a really kind of strong point of view for each scene that you play. Rather than like, well, this scene, I just need to be vaguely nice and get this plot detail done. No, he's, it was really exciting. And every scene, there's real drama and conflict because no one understands. And that, uh, I, I loved it, actually. I really loved it. Every now and again, you'll see someone on the tube or something who you, you, you get a kind of a double take. And you can tell they're thinking, did I go to school with that guy? There's, he's vaguely familiar, but I don't really know what it is. <laughs> And normally, that's, that's all it is. So which is good. That wig has saved me a lot of grief, I think. Harry and his castmates also sat down with us to chat about their South by Southwest debut film, Big Significant Things. And of course, we asked them some bookish questions. The world's largest, huh? Yes, sir. Can you take a picture of me? How's the road trip? I can't believe I've never done this before. Are you going to come meet me? I can't. I'm going to go and see the world's largest rocket ship. World's largest man-made star. Oh, wow. I I'm looking for the world's largest bottle. What does it look like? It's like a really tall bottle. Well, for me, I mean, everything was unique about this film because I'd never... I'd never done an independent film. I'd, I'm British. I've never played the lead in an American film. I'd never been to Mississippi. The whole film was filmed down in the, uh, in the south. So, I mean... I'd never worked with non-actors. We were casting people locally. The whole thing was a massive adventure, and it's about a guy who goes off looking for an adventure and doesn't really know how to find it. And actually, the making of it was quite the opposite. I went off to make a film and ended up with an adventure. For, for, for indie film, I mean, you know, you either get like your mom to bake cookies or like your friends to give money. But uh, I think it's it's great what Kickstarter's doing. Uh, I think it's it's great for indie film to to be able to have that kind of model. To, if you need a little extra money at the end and you know you can offer people something and uh, I think all around it's, it's great. I was just telling my mom how to set up the password and how to do it again and then just you know <laughs> now she's gonna get the t-shirt and the it's DVD. <laughs> yeah it's good. Okay, it took a while to get my parents to give money. <laughs> I did? Nobody in my family. We're Jews so they don't want to <laughs> give me. They just say hey Go make a movie. Even your mom, baby. We're tight. Hey. We're tight this month. Started. We set up to finish the film for the last kind of ten thousand dollars to help us get to here to the festival, and to help finish off the film in the sound mix and the score, and the kind of the publicity. Uh, I'd never done anything with Kickstarter, and I was excited by all the all the things you can do now with Kickstarter. You can just put a really good bid together, and the fact that people are really willing to help you do all these really disparate things. It was really exciting. I really enjoyed, there was a, all the scenes with Krista uh, Kersenen was wonderful, uh, this uh, Finnish actress who, uh, who plays Ella in the film. It's, I guess, um, well, you know, I can't lie, kissing is nice. Um, but, um, Her maybe... boyfriend's a Viking, so yeah. he's going to see this and he's going to rip <laughs> Harry's face off. Wow, okay. Well, my, fa my favorite Dickens book, weirdly, uh, was a got adapted into a TV show that I was in. We did uh, Great Expectations a few years ago. I, I read lots of stuff all the time and I, it's, like, it's really stressful because I don't know how to finish. I'm, I'm always starting a new one. Confederates in the Attic. Loved every second of it. It was a recommendation from our composer, Mark Orton, um, who uh, he did just finish Nebraska. Um, mm. And when we were working at his place, he recommended this book and it was, it was incredible. Oh wait, on the way down, we bought Divergent. Uh, we uh, we decided we're gonna we're gonna listen to Divergent and get really pumped for that film, and we listened to the book on tape for 12 hours. For all your young adult entertainment news, make sure to stay tuned at Rec Talk Ross and the Examiner. So, Harry, we took to Twitter to find out what questions your Twitter fans oh, really? wanted to ask. So, first of all, I have to ask this. 
Do you know what your fans call themselves? What? They call themselves loyalists. That makes sense. I think it's really cool to have a girl bunch of name for fans. So this question comes from Colleen Starlight. And her question is, because the film's called Big Significant Things, what is a big significant thing in your life? Thanks, Colleen. <laughs> Uh, that's a pretty broad question. I mean, like anyone, we all have looks. Yeah. What is a big, significant thing? Family, friends, pets. Yes, yes. Food. Uh, yes. Parties. Yeah, sometimes. I think it's ever like what kind of great. You, you, you want your big, significant thing to be something that I can see and I can touch and I can take a picture next to it, and there it is. But actually, is ever when you're kind of lost or you're at the sea, you're in trouble. You know exactly what's important to you, and it is. It's that thing. It is. It's family. It's friends. It's home. I love the fact that I have uh, so many actors and total nomads, and I travel a lot. But I've got a flat in London, uh, so I've got, I've got a base, and that's really important. So you have something, you have something to come back to. That's that's definitely one of my things. Okay, so I have to ask: Do you know who's going to win the Game of Thrones? I do. We were also going to see Is that legit? You really do know? Yeah, yeah, I know. Man, we're going to have to talk after this. Yeah. Let me tell you. <laughs> it's, 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 I'm excited to see it. Are you going to read book two? I mean, yeah. We, like, we have to. Okay. It's like, it's great. It's oddly really sexual. I didn't, I didn't Whoa, see Whoa, I haven't that. heard that before. It, right? Right? It's, it's, it's really sexual. Like, they're just falling down like a Ferris wheel, and you just hear, like, If it's, it's, I guess some people read other things into books. No. Sexual writing in Theo James. We've got someone on the outside up. saying yes, it's sexual.